A songwriter once wrote, "There's a broken heart for every light on Broadway. No one knows that sentiment better than the people who bring Broadway shows to life every year. Blood, sweat, and tears get poured into every show that opens, not to mention millions of dollars. But for every Hamilton, there's a Susical, a big-budget musical that opened at the Richard Rodgers Theater in 2000 and flopped after only 198 performances." Yet Susical managed to find success after its run on Broadway, being produced by nearly every school and community theater in America. Five years after Susical closed on Broadway, Disney would bring their fourth Broadway musical to the Richard Rodgers Theater. But would it join the ranks of Disney's previous musicals, or would it go the way of Susical? This was Disney's Tarzan on Broadway. By 2002, Disney was dominating the Broadway stage. Beauty and the Beast was a certified long-running hit. The Lion King had reached that all-important five-year benchmark, and Aida was still filling the Palace Theater two years into its run. Looking towards the future, Disney decided to release a list of new musicals the company had in development. Amongst them was a stage version of Disney's 1999 Academy Award-winning animated hit, Tarzan. Disney turned to Bob Crowley to direct and conceive the production. Crowley had previously designed the sets and costumes for Disney's Aida, for which he won a Tony Award for Best Set Design. Tarzan would be his directorial debut. Tarzan was originally conceived to be staged in the Round, with no plans of going to Broadway. The show would travel the country and play in a giant tent. The audience would be seated arena style, with the action happening all around them. However, the production was beginning to get too big, even for Disney. So the decision was made to make the show smaller and redesign it to fit the proscenium stage on Broadway. Crowley would be joined by book writer David Henry Huang. Huang had contributed to the Book of Aida, so Crowley was very familiar with his work. A workshop was held on January 30th, 2004, starring future Glee star Matthew Morrison as Tarzan, future Legally Blonde star Laura Bell Bundy as Jane, and Rent star Adam Pascal as the storyteller. None of them would continue on with the project. By 2005, Tarzan was set for Broadway, and the search began for a fresh face to play the title role. Casting eventually found who they were looking for in 22-year-old Josh Strickland. Strickland had toured the country in Rent and recently appeared on season two of American Idol. As producer Thomas Schumacher recalls, Josh came in with no experience of performing on Broadway at all. Then he sang "Everything That I Am," and we just couldn't believe it. No one we had seen had come anywhere close. He nailed it. Broadway veteran Jen Gambatis was cast as Jane Porter. Gambatis had originated roles in Hairspray, A Year with Frog and Toad, and all shook up on Broadway by the time she was cast in Tarzan. The rising star was the perfect choice to play Jane. Gambatis wouldn't be the only Hairspray alum in Tarzan. Chester Gregory, who played the seaweed to Gambatis's Penny, was cast as Tarzan's best friend, Turk. Gregory had to overcome a deep fear in order to land the role. I actually have a fear of heights. When it came time for me to do my audition, and they wanted me to, they kept bringing me through, and they wanted me to to swing and stuff like that. And so、um, when I started swinging to distract myself from my fear of heights,、uh, I started singing while I was swinging. And then apparently that was like something that really caught their eye or caught their attention. And they told me later that that was the extra thing that kind of put me over the edge. Gregory would use his incredible vocals and comedic timing to bring Turk to life. Amongst Tarzan's large ensemble was a young actor named Kevin Massey. Massey had made his Broadway debut in the 2003 Deaf West revival of Big River. Though Massey was originally brought in to audition for Turk, he ended up being cast as the understudy for Tarzan and played multiple roles in the ensemble. Massey still remembers the excitement of the first day of rehearsals. And they played this three and a half minute video,、mm-hmm. and it cut together. Bits from the workshops they had done of the flying, bits from 
set design, you know, the little stick people that they put in, and then bits from the animated feature, along with, of course, Phil Collins, I think it was Two Worlds, One Family. And they put it on the big screen, and oh, at yeah. the end of that, we were like, yeah! I don't remember being that excited to be a part of creating a show ever, or maybe since then. It was just so well done, and the way the music's well, da, 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 brrr, boom. We were, we were hook, line, and sinker into it. So that was a cool way to start the process. Rehearsals took place at Steiner Studios in Brooklyn, New York in the winter of 2005. The large studio allowed the cast to rehearse with the fly rig and set they'd be using on Broadway. There throughout it all was composer, lyricist, and pop icon Phil Collins. Collins would write nine brand new songs for the musical. He was there every single day. Every wow. single day. He had a little recording studio and he spent a lot of time up there. We had to make a num number of changes to the music and he was, as far as I could tell, very eager to do that. No, um, Phil Collins is real cool. He wasn't somebody who just kind of popped in and out and all that kind of stuff. He was very much watching, listening, uh, wanting to, uh, you know, enhance and make sure that the vision was coming to fruition. Collins worked hard to write new music that would fit the style of the cast. The show that Turk had originally was a song called I Believe in You. And Phil Collins was like, mm, no. And so he called me to the side and was like, I think I'm going to write a, a different song for you. Something that kind of has like a Motown feel. And I was like, OK, all right. He was like, would you be down for that? And I was like, yeah. He came back the next day with a song fully written. And that song was Who Better Than Me? You know, to have Phil Collins hear your voice and say, wait a minute, let me let me tailor something a little bit more towards what you're offering is, you know, it's an honor. The creative team allowed the actors to bring their own personalities to the characters. They allowed me to interpret the character the way um, I felt I wanted to portray him. Because, you know, it was originated by Rosie O'Donnell. Very different take when you're dealing with a black man and a white woman. So it's like, okay what's going to be. And they're like, isn't Turk supposed to be a girl? And it was all these questions and all this stuff. But they allowed me very much to interpret the character the way, the way I wanted to. When we were finally starting rehearsals, it was interesting because there was still a lot of work to be done. They had a lot of mm -hmm. concepts and a lot of ideas, but they had to figure out how to uh, execute it. And in the time that we needed and to tell the story and with more people, there was a point, maybe two and a half, three months in, where I think some of the actors started to think, I don't know if we have enough time to do all the things we need to do. Every, you know, there were changes being made and we were just trying to find the best thing. Before we knew it, it was at the end of the rehearsal period and we were getting ready to move into the theater. And you can kind of feel in the air, everybody's like, ooh, I hope this, you know. Hope, you know. I think we all thought it was possible if we had enough time, but as we saw the process was very collaborative, which was great, but it also made things go slower. And it felt like it was a workshop within a rehearsal period. Mm -hmm. And so there were big ideas to still figure out. And there were parts of the, of the show that were still being developed, but we were already open and running on Broadway at that time. In a departure for Disney, Tarzan would not receive an out-of-town tryout. It would open cold on Broadway. I think they had a great deal of confidence from Lion King thinking, we've got essentially six months of rehearsal in a movie studio in Brooklyn. We can certainly figure it out, you know, by then. And I think they also got a sense probably that critics were harsh to them mm. and maybe they wanted to come to New York without that history of an out-of-town try that maybe wasn't exactly what they wanted to do. They come in and have people, have the audience judge for themselves. Tarzan moved into its Broadway home to begin the tech process and prepare for its first preview performance. Tarzan would utilize an unusual preview schedule, only performing four shows a week in order to have more rehearsal time. Although tech was tedious and there was still much more work to do, the cast knew that one scene in particular would leave an impression on audiences. I knew that the opening of the show was incredible, and I knew that was going to knock everybody's socks off. I think we all knew that. It's genius, you know, the way um, Bob Crowley put together that whole thing. 
with the ship and all of that and then with the people laid out on the island from a bird's eye view set on the wall like it's like that was that opening is phenomenal because we kind of showed everything we had in those first five minutes everything that came most things that came after that were not as amazing to the audience because they had seen it a number of times and i think that that was um again part of a symptom of not having enough time because i think there was opportunity to have more wow factors but we just didn't have enough time when we got to opening we knew it, we would get mixed reviews we knew there would be people that would really love it audience members and then we knew that there were critics that would have a lot to tear apart unfortunately um but we believed we still had a really good show we went over the night party and when reviews came out we're like the reviews are out here's our first review i was like yeah oh holy yikes <laughs> Everybody holds Disney to such a high standard uh, that they really go after them, um, which is unfortunate because it's it, you got to figure out you know who is your audience, and right. it's not always going to be the you know upper elite, sophisticated people that Disney is trying to please. It, we've we got to have a kid family friendly show, but you also want the parents to enjoy it too, and. Uh, to be inspirational and tell a great story and so i think they accomplished a lot of that the critics don't know everything um and even if there is some truth to it you still this is your show and you can choose to just you know be deflated or you can say you know i'm going to make the best of it and we've got a lot of great things here and but i remember the next day our director bob who's from ireland he got on the microphone and he said a lot of things but he's like just tell the story just go out there and tell a story. You know, what can you do? But tell a story and tell it with as much joy as you can. So I, it was a little deflating at moments, but once we got back to it, you realized the audiences were still coming. They yeah. loved the heck out of it. It was a great cast. I had a blast. Despite the negative reviews, Tarzan continued to play to sold out houses throughout the year and developed a solid fan base. On November 16th, 2006, Disney opened Mary Poppins, bringing Disney's total number of Broadway shows running at the same time up to four. The cast of Tarzan was living the dream and prepared for a lengthy run after seemingly defying the critics. But the dream was about to come to an abrupt end. On June 23rd, 2007, Disney announced that Tarzan would close the following month after only 14 months on Broadway. It was a shock to not only the cast members, but also the crew. And if it's a shock to the crew, it means that it was a pretty quick decision. I think we had like a three week closing notice, something like no more than four weeks. Um, and I had just resigned. Um, mm. I had an offer to do Color Purple to portray um, Harpo on the tour. Mm. I was trying to think about like if I was going to stay with the show or leave and do another venture. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to go with, go on back to Tarzan. But, you know, then we got our closing notice. And so we closed. Fourth of July weekend, 2007. You know, we were all, you know, devastated because it's Disney and this is supposed to be running for 20 years like Lion King. And it was like, nope, it's not gonna happen. You know, I don't know what the advance was for the show. We were selling well at the time, but maybe the advance was going more towards uh, Little Mermaid or I think Mary Poppins um, at the time. I, I don't know, but, uh, it was a bit of a shock and it was hard. <laughs> it was hard. Yeah. Um, but shows close earlier than they should sometimes. And we just said, you know, okay, well, let's move on from here, you know? And so it kind of left everybody kind of feeling like, ah, thinking about the possibility of what could have been. Disney had experienced its first Broadway failure. The show that seemed set up for success would join the long list of expensive flops that just couldn't find an audience. But Tarzan's Broadway ending was only the beginning. Shortly after Tarzan began performances on Broadway, Disney announced that two international productions would be mounted in Holland and Germany. 
For the Dutch production, the role of Tarzan would be cast through a reality competition series called We Were Tarzan, or Who Will Be Tarzan. A Dutch singer named Ron Link won the competition and opened the production as Tarzan on April 15, 2007. The production was a success and ran for two years before closing to make room for the Dutch production of Mary Poppins. But Germany would turn out to be Tarzan's true home. The Hamburg production opened on October 19, 2008 and was immediately a hit with German audiences. Anton Zetterholm and Elizabeth Hubert were cast as Tarzan and Jane, respectively, after competing on the reality competition series Ich Tarzan, Du Jane. With the number of changes from the Broadway production, the Hamburg version of Tarzan displayed the true potential of the musical. Tarzan became the second most successful musical in Hamburg for producer stage entertainment. Patrick Healy for the New York Times put it this way, Few musicals can match the turnaround of Tarzan a case in which Disney did not allow pride to undermine the show's commercial future. Kevin Massey stepped into the role of Tarzan in Germany after a number of injuries amongst the cast. It was a huge hit over there, and they absolutely loved it. There was lots of stuff happening all over the audience and great new flights, and I think that benefited the production. So when I got the call, they basically said, how are you? Are you available? How's your German? And they put me on the phone with the German director, and I had to repeat this German tongue twister that was, I don't even know what he said, but I repeated it. He's like, oh, yeah, oh yeah he's fine. Who gets to go and revisit a show that had so many changes? And, you know, I just felt so lucky to, to be able to experience that. But it was cool to see it translate so well. And yeah. I think a big part of it is Phil Collins' music is awesome. He's yeah. a rock star. He's such a great person. And it's a great visual show. The Hamburg production continued to entertain audiences for five years, closing in 2013. But Germany still hadn't had enough of Tarzan. The same year the show closed in Hamburg, another production was opened in Stuttgart. In 2016, a new production with an updated set design premiered in Oberhausen. The new production would run for two years, bringing Tarzan to 10 years in Germany. In 2017, the original Broadway Tarzan, Josh Strickland, joined the Oberhausen cast to reprise his star-making performance. When reflecting on this final performance in Germany, Strickland said, The connection I have to this show and this role is one that will probably never be replicated and the family that I have come to know and love has grown from our first production on Broadway to the 10 years here in Germany. Don't be afraid. Tarzan the Musical has had a journey unlike any other. Although the show was deemed a failure on Broadway, it has prevailed overseas in ways that no one could have predicted. For the original Broadway cast, Tarzan is an experience that will live on in their hearts. The pain of closing early has been replaced with the joy of all that Tarzan has provided them over the years. I am forever grateful because it was my first Broadway show where I originated a role and I became a part of the Disney family. There are friendships that have lasted this entire time. So, you know, I'm still friends with Josh Strickland and Shane Gambatis, you know, she's a dream. And, you know, we're, we're all still friends stuff to this day. For me, it was one of the highlights of my career. I also got to be part of the Disney family. It's really true. They, it's a family and they've been so good to myself and my wife who also is in the Disney family because of Newsies. The Disney family does look out for you. And so like since then, a lot of us have been able to work and do other projects, other gigs and stuff because we're now under the Disney umbrella after having performed on Disney on Broadway. They really do treat you well and they really always try to put on a top notch, high quality performance. They care about every detail. And you don't get the opportunity to do that with every company, but Disney really tries their best to do that every single time. I'm just so grateful for the experience, and uh, I hope other people get to be a part of developing other Disney shows. They're always able and wanting to make something better. 
they don't give up on things. And that's another great quality they have. I would say the experience with Tarzan was epic. It was epic from the beginning till the end. One family, trust your heart, let fate decide to guide these lives we